as we uh, talked about the last time, Edwin Hubble was able to use Cepheids to get distances to stars. He also used uh, the apparent brightness to, to get distances to stars, and he was able to come up with this graph. It's probably the most famous graph ever made, or certainly one of the most famous uh, in astronomy or any other place, because it really tells us an immense amount about our universe. Now, in this section, I'm going to talk about the Big Bang. And this is essentially telling us that there was a Big Bang. Let me tell you how this works. Uh, this is a graph of distance on the x-axis. The silly MPC is megaparsecs. You can easily translate megaparsecs parsecs into uh, light years. I won't go into what a megaparsec is. It's not important. Uh, you could easily plot light years down there. As, and, and, and I've seen these kinds of uh, graphs plotted with uh, light years. And then those distances were determined from Cepheids and apparent brightness. And then you have also the recessional velocity uh, on the y-axis and the recessional velocities in kilometers per second. And that comes exactly from the amount of the red shift. So we can translate then red shift into velocity as we talked about before. And what does this tell us? Well, it tells us that the farther away a galaxy is, the faster it's moving away from us, which is astounding when you think about it. Just think, uh, they, Hubble discovered, and I, I don't mind repeating it, that the farther away something is, the faster away it's moving from us. It's all of those have red shifts. They're all moving away from us. You know, Hubble was the first person to discover that uh, there were galaxies outside of our galaxies. And when he started to realize that and started measuring Cepheids in other galaxies, well, uh, he could get out to, to, to some pretty good distances. And so he was able to recognize this trend. And wow, that, that set the whole world on fire, the whole world uh, of astronomy. Now, let's go to another interesting gentleman, Georges Lemaitre. He's actually a Catholic priest and astronomer, and he recognized that not only from uh, what Hubble showed, he recognized that if things were moving away from each other, as you see in this diagram, then there must have been a point in time when everything was back together again, in, in, in a point that he imagined would be infinite in in energy and infinite in mass, if there could be such a point. And that's called a singularity, as you can see uh, in this. So if all of the, all of the uh, galaxies are moving away out into space, if you extrapolate that back, he suggested that there might have been a point where everything was together. And this was the first time people started thinking, hey, there might have been a Big Bang out there of some sort. Now, where did that Big Bang term come from? Well, it came from the, the character Fred Hoyle over here on the right. Uh, Hoyle, very famous astronomer, and he was making fun, actually, of this idea on a, a 1950 BBC television show where he was interviewed, and he, and he kind of offhandedly called it the Big Bang. Well, even though Hoyle didn't believe in it at the time, it actually looks like we have had uh, this process happen. Uh, Georges Lemaitre was right, uh, Fred Hoyle was wrong. It's come to be known as a Big Bang, even though it's not really a Big Bang. And let me emphasize that point. When I say Big Bang, I don't mean there was an explosion. A lot of people think this is, means there was a big explosion in the past. It's not that, as we're going to find out uh, later on. It's general relativity tells us that it's the expansion of space-time that causes space to move, or, or causes the galaxies to be moved outward. So they're literally being dragged along as space-time expands. We'll get into that more. I know that's a, uh, a strange concept, but that's what general relativity uh, tells us. Now, if you have all of this material going outward from something that was at almost infinite energy, or maybe it was at infinite energy, who knows? No one knows. Um, then some people, Ralph Alpher, um, Robert Herman, and George uh, uh, Gamow, 
they predicted that we would have some leftover energy from that cosmic event. And that leftover energy would permeate space. And they called that, uh, they didn't call it that, but we now call it the cosmic microwave background radiation, as you can see there. And the cosmic microwave background uh, was estimated by the three of them to be about 5 degrees Kelvin. Now, in case you don't know what Kelvin is, zero Kelvin is absolute zero. That's when uh, electrons don't even move around atoms. You can't get to absolute zero, as, as general relativity tells us, but you can, we get pretty close to it in laboratories all over the world. So it's not, it's impossible to get to zero. It's like traveling the speed of light. It's, it's possible to travel the speed of light, possible to get to zero, but we can, we can get pretty close when we're getting down to uh, degrees Kelvin. And if you want to relate degrees Kelvin to centigrade, uh, centigrade is a minus two, uh, zero degrees Kelvin is a minus 273.15 degrees centigrade. So that's how Kelvin relates to um, centigrade. So just imagine, we have, they're predicting that we should find this low temperature energy that permeates space at about five degrees Kelvin. And the two gentlemen that you see in the bottom of the picture are Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson. And Arno Penzias and Wilson built, built this, sat, uh, this um, antenna with AT&T, and they went out to, to test it, and they kept getting this hiss. The antenna, by the way, is, is in the back of, the, of, of them. They're standing in front of it, I should say. And they kept getting this hiss on their antenna, and they couldn't figure out what it was. They were even cl cleaning bird dung off of it uh, in the hopes that that would stop the hissing. They thought there was something originally wrong with their antenna, and then they got to reading up on it, and they recognized that, oh my gosh, we're listening to the background radiation. And sure enough, they were the first ones to discover the background radiation. That occurred in 1954, excuse me, in 1964. And they measured it eventually, and we know today that it's at 2.725 degrees Kelvin. That's a rather precise number. That's because we've sent satellites up to measure it. And just think, Alpha and, and um, Herman and Gamal, they predicted that to be 5 degrees, not bad. So this is the beauty about science. It, it makes a prediction, and then uh, you can go out and you can test that with experiments, and that's precisely what happened here. It was sort of a serendipitous discovery, but it, sh it did show that there was exactly what was predicted if we had a Big Bang. And in fact, we, we have had a Big Bang. All the evidence points towards a Big Bang, and it's certainly not controversial any longer. It was back in 1964. It's no longer controversial. Almost everyone agrees that there's a background of radiation, that there was a Big Bang, and that we're looking out into space at the leftover energy from that Big Bang. Now, I want to uh, go a little bit more detail about this idea of expansion. We're looking at uh, a star here in our own galaxy, and the age of that star is 13.6 billion years, and uh, 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 it's 6,000 light years away, so that's not, that's very close if you're talking about some of the distances we're talking about. So we know that with stars that are 13.6 billion years in our own galaxy, that the, that the universe must be at least 13.6 billion years old. And as you'll see in this slide, this is from the deep um, Hubble uh, view. It's the, uh, and, and you know, I'm, I'm going to mention this now, I'm going to talk about it a lot, but when you look out into space, and I know this is a foreign concept to many of you, but when you look back out into space, you're looking back into time. Remember, it takes a certain length of time for that light to get to us. And so by the time it gets to us, it, it's old, uh, depending on how far out you look. And the farther you look out into space, the farther back in time you look. And so Hubble has been able to look back in time to the very origins of our universe. We're looking at a, at a faint galaxy here, from the Hubble Deep Field, which was, a, which was a, a picture that Hubble took of the farthest distance most galaxies. And you're looking at a star that's, uh, or excuse me, a galaxy that's 13.1 billion years old. And if, 
if you tried to measure where that, where that galaxy is today, well, it's 30 billion light years distance from us now. Because remember, when you're looking back in time, that's where it was 13 point, uh, what was it, 13.1 billion years ago. But today, it's now moved on, so have we. It's 30 billion light years away. So I, I'm hoping you're getting some idea of the immensity of the universe. In fact, the, the, uh, the precise age of the universe is 13.798 plus or minus 0 .037 billion years. So we've got it down pretty close. Uh, roughly, the universe is 13.8 billion years old. So we, we just discovered that in the last uh, 15, 20 years or so. So we're just now getting the information and the data together to be able to determine the age of the universe. Now I'm going to show you a very brief film uh, that has show that shows the Hubble uh, deep field view. I think you might find this rather interesting. <laughs> 